forward. Hello, hello. We've got a three for today, which I'm so happy about. Eric Medhus, hello, darling. And hello. He says he comes in today and he, he's very playful today. Very playful today, energy. As opposed to other days. Well, just like extra, like he's a little extra oh, um, yeah. playful and, and um, uh, just kind of messing with me a little bit. And it's just kind of fun. He's got, he's got some really um, interesting energy today. Fun. Wow, that's so cute. I love you, Eric. And we have oh, Jennifer Doran too. at psychicmediumjenniferdoran.com, which of course I will put in the title page. Um, close to the end. And Alan Vera. Hi, Alan. Long time no see. I've missed Hi, you. Oh, as always, I've missed you as well. How have you been? I've been good. And well, so, good. Uh, and you can be reached and again, I will uh, put yeah, it Yeah, you can find in. me on my website or they can find me on YouTube. Okay. Sounds good. You can't and really hide anymore in the modern no. era. <laughs> no. No, I know. All right. No, and what you, is your website yeah, again? Sorry. Yeah, it's just my full name. Doc. I was going to say, if somebody wants to find you, they're going to find you. Oh, of course they will. All right. So we've got a very interesting um, session today that I've kind of thought about before, but this is just a perfect combination of Jennifer channeling what Eric has to say and Alan being able to go into the astrological kind of components and spiritual contract components. And basically we would like to know more about Eric's um, spiritual contract. I mean, and of course you've done his chart, so. I've, I've done his chart and I have, um, I, I cheated a little bit because I also work with, um, channelers, one in particular. And so I did also leading into this conversation, confirm what I perceived in the chart with Eric Pryor. That's not but, cheating. So I thought based on my intuition, communication with him, and then of course, the Jennifer and yourself here, we'd really be able to bring together a pretty complete explanation, perhaps of a little bit of what happened, where he is now, and even some of the messages that he wants us all to know with regards to his own life. Okay. Do yeah. you, Eric, do you want to start out? Yeah, uh, so, so he's already started to kind of tell me um, that, and I, I find this kind of interesting, you know, oftentimes we plan a life, we come in, we live the life, um, choosing when we're going to be born and when we're coming in plays a, plays a big role in um, actually some of the work that we do before we come in here, because, you know, when we're dealing with certain issues, he says, sometimes those issues would be more difficult if you were say an earth sign compared to an air. So okay. we can choose kind of when we come in. So we'll know a little bit about what's actually in the chart and in the stars. But he says for him, what's interesting this time is that so much, he says, so much of my work is being done in the afterlife in regards to this particular lifetime mm -hmm. um and that's just he says that's not always the case it's you know it feels a little bit less common to me how he's making me feel about it well what is more common it's more common that we live the life here you mm -hmm. know whatever life we plan to come in and then we cross over we do our life review and and yes that there would be some stuff that we're still working on and still learning but not as much with the identity okay. of who we were in that lifetime Oh, I see. So his fifth dimensional Eric is the one who is the workaholic. No. Yes, and he, he is, says, is, yeah, working on his spiritual mission, life purpose. Yes. Doing it here. And, and he's very connected. His soul is very connected to the lifetime of Eric Methuse. Good. Okay? That's, why he, that's why his personality still shines through. Yes. Good. Yes. All right, so do you want to add anything? Of course you do. Alan, um, talk to me about what you've learned from his chart yeah. and so, from so I think Jen Jennifer's spot on. Jennifer's spot on, and that is that Eric is influencing us, the, the, the world, the human realm with um, these incredible gifts and talents that he has from the other side. And I think that's on for two reasons. The first is, my belief, his life 
was cut short. And so he didn't have the full opportunity to influence as he intended on a pre-incarnation basis when he first showed. Yeah. And then the second is that Eric happens to be a phenomenally senior um, angelic being. Mm -hmm. Wow. And insofar as Eric is very far along on his spiritual journey, he has a great deal of love and light that he can then go forth and shower upon us, even in a discarnate or a non-human state. And so the reason Jennifer's saying is that it's unusual is because most incarnates within this realm, their greatest potential for change is while they're in the physical form. When they actually go back into spirit, their um, evolution doesn't allow them to influence what happens here. Oh, I see. But Eric's exceptional because Eric was so far along in his spiritual journey that when he came here, he brought in tremendous intention for this incarnation. When it didn't complete, he was still left, of course, because he's an internal energy. Because he's so far along, he's still in a position to continue to influence us. Wow. So um, what was he supposed to do uh, to, to try to influence us when he was in a body? But so, it got cut short. I mean, what was what yeah, were so, what were your plans, so, Eric? Or so, you could tell me, Alan. So from so Eric was seeking consciousness in this incarnation, which is he needed to have his spiritual awakening. The spiritual awakening that we seek requires a degree of suffering. The suffering that Eric experienced was a, a little bit off script. Mm -hmm. It wasn't intended to unfold the way it unfolded. And insofar as Eric brought forth incredible light and incredible potential. He was the target of more of the darker energies I that know. imperil all of us. Yeah. And so Eric's intention for this incarnation was to help with the ascension as part of what's unfolding right now on the planet is this forces of good and evil are playing out and center stage for the first time really on earth. And Eric had planned to reach consciousness and then to be a beacon of hope and of light and of love to help others with the ascension to go forth and properly complete their own incarnation cycle here on earth. And that would have happened through healing because before you can enter into true consciousness, you have to be healed. And so part of his intention was healing of the different layers of the, 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 the spirit, the mind, and the body. You're talking about the, who was in, on earth? He, he, yeah. he was supposed he, to be healed? Or? His intention here was very explicit, and he is part, so he's part of an angelic force. He's part of, so, so we think about, if, I'll, take a, I'll take a little bit of a step back and I'll explain to you where he is in his incarnation cycle. So the number seven shows up everywhere in spiritual texts. Okay, whether it's the seven days that God needed to create all that is as written in Genesis, whether it's Sanskrit that speaks of seven over and over and over. Yeah. Even many lives, many masters, which is a channel, it's a, a work by a psychiatrist in Southern Florida and the law of one, all of it over and over speaks of seven. And what seven speaks of is the seven levels of consciousness. You move through each of those levels, one to the next to the next. Okay. So Earth right now is a late third density, early fourth density planet. It's moving through its transition. Okay. And so the people that reside here, about 99% of them are all third density consciousness. Eric, for perspective, happened to be a late sixth density mm -hmm. being. Okay. Eric was right at the edge of his incarnation cycle, Eric's actually approaching, he would be considered an angelic force that to put it simply would be the hand of God. It's wow. because on the seventh day, the spirit rests because on the seventh day, which is your seventh density, you reunite with the source. And because Eric was so late in his incarnation cycle, he had amassed incredible potential to influence others and to raise the consciousness or the vibration of the planet. So Eric, along with many other highly conscious beings representing a very small percentage of the planet, have come back to be in service and to help bring light and love onto what is otherwise a darkened, somewhat difficult third density planet. 
but the darker forces got the better of him did he have like a negative entity attached to him can or I, can i just jump in because he's saying some stuff to me what he says is actually people who come souls who come in like that oftentimes because they still he says we've still come in to the human form and oftentimes souls that come in at the at the level that he's at have a difficult time being here oh, because yeah. once they get here the heaviness of it uh weighs um yeah. it, it weighs on them yeah and so it weighs on them on a few different levels for starters they're not from here they didn't move through the process like most of the other third densities did he went through his third density many many years ago he's simply coming back it's like as if you were to go to a kindergarten and go back to help the kids put together blocks he's coming back to be of service to those of us that are otherwise here in this realm without the understanding that his soul has. So there's already gonna be a bit of an energetic mismatch, but on top of it, there's usually almost always a loneliness because you have trouble connecting with the consciousness around you. He always wrote, he wrote on, on Facebook, always lonely. And, yeah. and so, and so, he, so he, he would be always lonely until he reached consciousness and then found others that had likewise wandered back to be of service I so the, real, the resonance that eric saw would have been with other souls of that same spiritual progress okay so, uh, so the, but the last thing that i was going to share is yeah. that the brighter your light it's like you think about a dark night and somebody turns on a bright light and you're outdoors maybe in texas and all the moths come and swarm the light yeah Right, the insects swarmed Eric. Yeah, and yeah, so it's those, it's those, it's those insects. It's the insidious energy. Bullies. Oh, it's just awful. Uh, yeah. And so Eric needed to be in a state of perpetually asking for protection. Yeah. Every day, and it's funny because when we were kids, we used to say, "Now I lay me down to sleep. Yeah. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Yeah. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take." Yeah. Right? I pray the Lord my soul to take, and then now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. What does that mean to keep? It's to keep me safe, to keep me protected. Yeah. And so it's funny because as children, we had such a strong connection to prayer, and then something happened where our minds have been distorted and the church has been infiltrated and there's a low vibration attached to it, which is the entities that have influenced our desire to seek help from the angelic beings. But Eric, more than anyone, needed to come forth and say, please protect me, please keep me safe from harm. And it's bizarre because so few of us actively ask the angels on a regular basis, and you don't have to say the angels, you can say God, you can say the universe, you can say source, whatever you need to say, but just come forth with a simple prayer, please protect me, keep me safe, protect me from harm. Yeah. And, and, and that request, that request alone, if Eric was in that perpetual state, it would have done wonders to keep his journey alive. I yeah. believe longer. Yeah. So he's just because you were talking about the the prayer that you know a lot of us said when we were children. So I think this is why he's giving me the analogy that way. He he actually took me back to the playground that was in my um, on my elementary school when I was a kid, and and he said it's like it's like all the kind of lower level energy, the 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 heaviness of earth is all on the playground where the jungle gym and the swing and the slide are. Yeah. And it's so hard not to be drawn to that when you're a kid. And then there's just this empty field, you know, where there's enlightenment and there's peace and there's comfort. You know, as a kid, you just want to go here. And he says, that's what happens to so many people. You just, okay, this is where the fun is. This is where I'm going to go. And it, and it, and it dilutes our ability to see beyond what's here now, you know, and mm -hmm. I just, that was kind of a, a neat analogy. I hope, I hope yeah, you know, I like everybody. It. It so angelic as a child so happy and so he giving. loves you guys calling him angelic by the way i know <laughs> you better not pull rank on me though eric i'm still your mama i can still put you over my knee so did he have a negative entity that that attached had, to him during his he life had, he had many attached to him for a long time and that was what was weighing on his human mind yeah it, it wasn't the it wasn't it wasn't the drugs like no, it wasn't, he didn't do that much of the way of drum. Yeah. yeah. No, it, he, wasn't, he, it wasn't any of that. And so, and so you have to, 
Yeah, so when I was in the channeled session and Eric came through, he said, he said, and this is what- Hold on one he, second. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, Alan, but he's telling me some stuff I wanna say before you say yeah, um, yeah. What, okay. what you're about to say, sorry. Um, what he's saying about the negative entities is that sometimes he would even hear them as voices. I know. It wasn't schizophrenic. He said that to me. He would hear them in his voice, like as a different voice in his head. And he says it was so hard sometimes to just not let them take control. That is so uh, true. And of course, the psychiatrists, they think, well, auditory hallucinations. No, he, yeah, no, he wasn't hallucinating. He I wasn't always crazy. wondered about that. I yep. always thought he was hearing some entity. I apologize for interrupting you, Alan, but no, it's pushing it's, me hard. It, it's spot on. We're all on the same page here. So what had come, this is my preparation. I've got all my notes, by the way. So I, I'm looking at the different notes and I don't want to make sure that I don't, I don't leave anything off. Um, so he came forth and he said his pain was extreme and he had no clarity on methods needed for dealing with the suffering at that age. Yeah. And, and the first word that came through was that there was blackness. He said there was blackness all around. And I said blackness. And then he said bleakness. And he said, is it bleakness or is it blackness? And then it became clear to me that it was the entities that had infused into his mind and that were creating the endless chatter that was really throwing him off badly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then I said, and so I said, um, tell me more about the experience in childhood. And he said, mom was quite busy, but I chose her as my mother for her strength to aid in my mission. And he says, the drugs were not the main issue. The entities were. Yeah. He, he did almost no drugs. Yeah. yeah. And he said, and I asked, I said, were the drugs involved? As he says, the drugs were not an issue. He says, the entities were, I never asked for protection. And that led, that put him in a position of perpetual vulnerability. And it just kept piling on and piling on, which is exactly what the dark energy wants, is to take someone like Eric, who has the potential to shower the world with so much light and with so much love and with so much clarity and consciousness to put them in a state of insanity. And then without any of the tools to see his way through it, he was really alone. He was really just floating on his own. Oh, you know, um... They had, who said there's this quote that says, when the light grows brighter, the dark reacts violently. And I guess that is what, um, what happened to him. Um, now, if he had not, if he had been protected and didn't have all these darker forces, uh, you know, making him lose his footing in life, what was he supposed to do to raise conscious awareness? Was he supposed to have a, make a healing center? I mean, what, what was his uh, plan? So it's so there's a complexity to it all because the more intelligent the incarnate that you choose and the more profound the mission that you're on, the greater the amount of suffering needed to propel you into consciousness. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Yeah. But okay. what was what was his specific plan if so he had Eric, not, uh, to so do Eric, what? Eric was going to spend a certain amount of his life just reaching spiritual awakening. He needed to have a true awakening to have full consciousness. And then from that position of consciousness, he would have been in a particularly advantaged position to help others who are likewise intended to be here to raise consciousness for them to enter into a similar space so that they could go forth with their mission too. And in the context of the planet, desperately trying to evolve into the next level of consciousness, individuals like Eric and others are all here to raise the vibration, the frequency of the planet, to allow for a positive outcome of the Earth's evolution. And so, so, so it's, a, it's a, a, a complex, kind of more involved conversation, but there are those that wish to do good, and there are those that wish to do bad. There are those that are positive with their intentions and that there those are more insidious and negative with their intentions all of this speaks to the vibration that is the universe eric would have brought forth the highest of the high vibrational energy he would have been able to awaken more and more people through healing and understanding and they would have gone and started to shift the consciousness of the planet to tilt it into the necessary state to be of service to others and to bring forth light and and positive intention to earth 
Well, after he got spiritual, uh, became spiritually awakened in his incarnate state, what was he planning to be a speaker, write book? I mean, how was he planning to? It's, it's, it's so for him at his level, he would have been working with others that were at his level, which is a very small kind of group that are of particularly strength and importance. And so in all likelihood, things like healness centers, there are a number of them that are underway that will be constructed to help awaken and to heal. There is also the, um, there will be some social media, there will be all sorts of publications, but it'll be a very targeted group and it'll be those whose consciousness calls them to it that yeah. Eric would have been working with directly. So it's, it's almost like, like, like your husband works in finance and he has like high net worth and like ultra high net worth and then like extreme high net worth clients. Yeah. It's like moving up that consciousness pyramid. Eric would have been dealing with the, the upper echelons within that, that frame. Oh, okay. So was suicide at all in his spiritual contract? Mm -hmm. No? No. Oh, well, Eric, what, so do you have anything to say? What do you have to say? Yeah, for Eric was talking about I, that. I, I thought you were supposed to come here, suffer a lot, and then have a short life so you can do what you're doing now, but that's not the case? No? What he said, so how he's putting it to me is that, okay, he's trying to give me a saying, and I'm not quite getting it, and I feel bad that I'm not quite getting it. But what he says is basically, I'll use a snowball. There was like a snowball coming down the mountain and, and things, certain things happened that changed, that changed his choices, okay? So there, what he's saying is that there were outside influences that happened that changed my free will decision, so to speak. Um, so the this is the path. The what? negative stuff? You mean the negative entities? Internet? Yes. Yeah, the negative stuff and not being able to get, get past that. So it's like, um, it, you know, you know how like when we were kids and stuff, there'd be TV shows and stuff. And then all of a sudden it would end and then it would show us an alternative ending. Oh, yeah. Do you guys remember that? Like, yeah. And, and it was just like, okay. And it would go back like five minutes in the show and, and give an alternative ending. Oh, yeah. He's kind of putting it to me like that. So so he says it's not yeah maybe it wasn't in his chart for suicide but it's what happened so it changed the the ending it changed how he was going to get to where he had to go if if he had if things had gone the other path mm -hmm. and he was able to um kind of reach that that plane here um he he would i'll tell you he's telling me it would not have been on as big of a scale as it is the way he's doing the work now. Okay. Okay. He says, I can reach more people now than I would have um, if I had been a, a still a living human person there. I don't know if you guys have ever compared his and Lucas's charts, but he said Lucas would have been a huge part in that had he stayed here. Wow. So that's something that maybe Alan, you and Elisa might want to look at. Or maybe you already have Alan. I don't know. No, no, no. no Lucas. Yeah. Lucas, his brother. His bro yeah, his brother Lucas. If, if yeah, it looks a lot like Eric. Yeah, so. Yeah, when we have these CE events, if he comes, people are like, <gasps> like that. It has a meet and greet. because it's Eric. <laughs> so, so Eric incarnated with a particularly challenging chart. And that's an indication that he needed to have a very high degree of struggle because when you come in with a very smart, very capable, and it's actually the human intellect, but also all the other skills that are not measurable, like intuition and charisma, and um, sometimes uh, uh, judgment and sense of humor, all those other qualities that are rounding off our human incarnation, he would have brought forth a great deal of them and for him to reach that awakened state, he would have had to have, remember, there's balance that operates yeah. within the universe on everything. So if you come in and you're particularly articulate and, and, and influential and intelligent, then to reach spiritual, because you can get sucked into the materialistic world very easily when you have all those skills, for him to reach consciousness, it would have required a great deal of suffering to create the necessary catapult, if you will, to get lift off. And so his chart indicates that he brought in a phenomenal volume of influential skills 
that was then being accompanied by a great deal of inner struggle. Mm -hmm. And so that's the equation that he incarnated with, but with the hope that he would then propel himself into an enlightened state. We're talking like, you know, sainthood or, you know, the, 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 the yogis, if you will. Oh my God, most... don't give him a big head, please. <laughs> so, but, but Eric, it's not, so Eric's part of what's known as a social memory complex. Like Eric has formed into a collection of souls that are all now, they're all operating together. Oh. And so when Eric comes through, it's Eric had an identity, he had an individual soul many, many incarnations ago, but he has since formed together into a large group, which is the angelic force. And so when we're complementary of Eric, we're actually complementary of a group. And, and that group consciousness, Eric's a part of it. When he came down onto earth, he separated. It's like, think of a honey pot and having a drop of honey come out of the honey pot. So Eric would have been a drop of honey that entered into a physical body. When Eric's physical body ended, the honey returned to the honey pot. So Eric et al., in other words. Eric, and in this case, so six and a half million other souls that are formed together into a very tightly bound social memory complex, which is incredibly evolved and with phenomenal spiritual intention to influence. Well, why wouldn't one of those other souls be the spokesperson, so to speak, or the... But they are. Okay. Now, was Eric it... happens to be the one that's closest to you because oh. Eric chose you and you happen to be his mother. And that makes it a remarkably unique arrangement to begin with. Yeah, that's true. But there are other enlightened beings that come from Eric's social memory complex that are likewise influencing people oh, with the work that they're doing. Good. So, and uh, er and what Eric... Matthew, right? The Ma Matthew? The one that is channeled by his mother? Might be one of them. Uh, but it, this is not important, but was suicide one exit point at all or not that he planned before um, incarnating? So, so it's, so I, I don't, you know, like the, 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 we're still blind, we're, we're still with a blind hold on. So a lot of... Who is that? Are you guys, it rolls there? Did you guys hear that? No, I didn't hear anything. I did as well, Jennifer. That was strange. Oh wow! Yeah, it was like a very gravelly male voice, right in the undertones oh, or something. Probably. Yeah, yeah. you can see what time we're at. Definitely go back and check that because oh, I don't know yeah, what the heck yeah. that was. Wow. All right, we'll look at that. So, so I'm gonna. I'm. You know, there's humility when you move into the spiritual path, partly because that's the dissolving of the ego require. It leads to humility, but also because we know that we really don't know. And so all I can tell you when you ask this question, I can tell you from my perspective and vantage point, Eric did not incarnate to commit suicide. Okay. Well, that's well my, that's my he vantage might point. to help him find protection. I mean, why okay. couldn't I have done that? Can, 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 can you, is it okay if I jump in? Yeah. Um, so what, what he says to me about this is that kind of more on the earthly looking at things he he would say that this because he exited here there you can call it an exit point because oftentimes people try to commit suicide and it's not effective because yeah. beings from the other side spirit guides god jesus whatever you want to say jumps in and intervenes so that we cannot leave yeah that happened so to he, me before yeah yes so so he kind of puts it like he was allowed to go Okay. It may not have been in his chart, but because he was allowed to go, it was his exit point. He exited then. Um, and, and so what he says about you, because he kept telling me, man, he keeps making the side of my face so hot today. I said, why are you doing that? And he's just like, I just keep touching you. And oh. like, just this one side, which is that's the side they come in for me. He just keeps making my whole cheek hot. Well, are, if, if you see are you me, petting her? It, that's why. <laughs> are you loving on her? <laughs> yes, he must be. Um, but he kept saying to me that, that he, you know, he chose you to be his mother and, and you weren't to fix this for him. Okay. So he says, when you, when you go back, when, when you go back to, to the lifetime that you guys had together, you were a good mother. You, you know, he calls you a great mother. You, you did everything you thought was right and that you were doing. 
But what he says is you didn't have the information that you would have needed. Okay. Exactly. So you exactly. can't, yeah, you can't be that's, that's, feeling that's guilty. That's yeah. the most important message. Yes. That's yeah, the most important message. And it's through understanding that you'll be able to finally release any of the pain associated with his loss. The first yes. part of it is recognize that Eric is back home and he's doing great. Yeah. Like he's in a he's in a good space. But part of me as a mother, I mean, I showered him with so much love. And to think that I wish I had known protect so, protection, so, you know, techniques and stuff to teach him, but I didn't. I didn't. You didn't. And that's what yeah. he said, you didn't know. And so, and that's kind of the irony of it is that the, the, the forces of good are not able to interfere with one's free will. And yeah. so there is nothing that could have told you how to protect him. Yeah. He's just said something very sweet and it's given me goosebumps. He says, mom, I had the choice of who I chose as my mother. He said, I could have chosen somebody who had that knowledge yeah. if I uh -oh. wanted to. He yeah. said, but I chose you. No, um, glad you did. So, you did because the mission that he had required an example of how to exhibit tremendous strength, resolve, and determination, and he chose you for your strength. Uh -huh. It was the example that he needed, and that's the practical representation of it that has been your life and energy. And you're getting this partly by, from my chart too, I guess. Because you're on the power cusp. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm. I'm... Uh, right on the cusp there. Um, so I'm getting it from your life. I'm getting it from your determination. I'm getting it from, of course, your chart. There's a lot of different factors that reinforce that intuition, but also from Eric himself. It was, a, and it's always the case. We create atmospheres that enable us to be as most likely as possible with our mission. And so the mission that Eric had planned required the influence or the example that you would set for him and the family that he would incarnate into. Yeah, it was a well, deliberate choice. And there was nothing, the part of the trade-off, if he had incarnated into a devoutly religious family, they would have said, you know, pray for protection, pray for protection, but they wouldn't have equipped him with the skills that he needed to go forth with the mission that he had planned. He needed you, he needed the example of that household to be successful with the magnitude of the influence that he was trying to bring forth as his mission. Yeah, because I always ta taught my kids how important love is and and you know i we, we do random acts of kindness um, as a general i mean a very common medhus ritual and write anonymous letters of gratitude to people like teachers the fire department and stuff so um and, and okay that's it, and that's, but that's alisa that's what it's all about yeah. And so what you're speaking of is the representation of the highest vibration possible, which is an act of kindness, or in that case, um, service to others without anything coming back to you. Yeah, no. And he saw that, that I would give of myself to, you know, charity for, I mean, take care of uh, patients without, they couldn't pay and, and just things like that. Right. Eric, and that, you that would, but oh. that would help, but that would help and enliven the consciousness that was dormant within him. Because when we enter into the physical realm, regardless of how evolved our soul yeah. is, we have to play by the rules. And the rules of this realm is that you have complete forgetting. You have spiritual amnesia. You have no idea why you're here. Yeah. And so he chose an environment that would influence him most effectively so that he could reawaken. I remember he was... Um we were in, right in front of the garage and I asked him, and I don't know, you know, I, I wasn't into any of this at that point. So I don't know why I asked this, what are you here to do, Eric? And he, he said, wouldn't, he wouldn't have been able to, he wouldn't have been able to tell you clearly, but he would have no. maybe given you a philosophical explanation or some roundabout explanation. Because yeah, he, until, said, he did. He said, I'm here to teach people how to be. So, so maybe he didn't know that's exactly what he, so to, how to be right to, yeah. to know thyself, to accept thyself, to love thyself. That is the primary intention of being here. Wow. So that he was probably channeling his higher self, maybe, or the honeypot. <laughs> he was channeling the honeypot. He was tasting the sweetness of his true oh. self. Eric, did you leave um, an EVP on this, on, on this session? Yeah. I don't know if that was him, but yeah, yes, there's, there's going to be some EVPs okay, we'll here. Um, but he also says that um, 
the way you've carried out and helped him with his mission since he's been gone, he says there's really, you know, not, not many other people who would have been able to do it, who would have had the strength and the fortitude to keep going the way you have. Well, it isn't always easy because I battle my own negative sure. around me, unfortunately, just like he did. But I just, for a point where I say, screw them, you Fuck know, it, love and light, that's it. <laughs> anyway, um, so why did you have to have ticks? I mean, they were so awful for you. And also learning disabilities, why? What he says to me is that was part of the struggle um, he needed to have. A, a, you know a decent amount of struggle here to get to where he was trying to be and this was just some of the stuff he brought in um and he said that you know um when you have externally visible struggles that brings another layer of difficulty because you do get picked on because people do no. harass you so you know a lot of times people on, on the outside appear to have their shit together he says and appear to be okay but they're battling demons within themselves that yeah. they keep to themselves he said part of what he needed was obvious challenges that other people would then um okay so you pretty okay. much said i need the darker forces to challenge oh, me so you don't need the darker forces you need the catalyst to propel yourself okay into your, into your awakening so there's a difference between him setting himself up for bullying versus him being the light that attracts the evil monster. So, so how do you develop compassion? You go through your own degree of suffering. Yeah, and right? he did. It's, right, it, it, I mean, Eric brought forth enough struggle so that he could propel himself into his awakening so that when he arrived there, he would have a degree of compassion for the elements that have existed within others and people around him. but. Once again, all those are pre-incarnation choices, and when you reach awakening, all those go away. Yeah, I mean, he would, I looked at his Facebook uh, before they memorialized it, and I, I saw messages to people, like one was uh, to a girl, I hear you're having a hard time, would you like me to come and sit with you for a while? Or he'd um, go be at the Starbucks, and strangers would gravitate toward him. I get maybe that's yeah. part of the angelic thing, the light thing. But they would sit and then for some reason they would start to share their their life story and it's all, was almost always awful. And he would end up just giving them comfort, giving them hugs, bringing them home for, for dinner, things like that. There, there are very few elements of our life that are not chosen pre-incarnation. Yeah, ah, oh. hmm. There are very few elements. There's so much planning that goes into each life, and that's why each life has so much importance. But that quality that you're describing for a relatively young American male is an extraordinary quality. Yeah, it was like 17, eight, I mean, you know. And, and that's already because been he had already gone through enough suffering, even in his teens, to, to, to emanate such deep, authentic compassion that people would automatically gravitate to him and he would soothe and support them accordingly. Yeah. It's yeah, he calls, he, he's, he calls it a gentleness. He he calls it a gentleness that people if, you know, if they were paying attention would notice. Yeah. What's what's that quote it's easier for to an, a camel to pass was it the uh pass through the eye of a camel can not remember. Oh, this oh needle. Is a camel pass through the eye of a needle than it is a rich man to get into the heavens. Right? Yeah. Like if everything is provided for you and you just have an easy life, right? Where you have riches and you're every, everything, you don't develop the compassion. You're certainly not walking in the heavens, right? If you're struggling throughout your life and you're able to harness the struggling and the suffering and move into an elevated state of being, you become the light and the love that all others can gravitate to. Well, why are some people go through such struggles and they don't develop compassion. They just de develop self-loathing and self-pity and victimhood. Yeah, so I'll ask you that question. Why does that happen? So what Eric says is that... It's a, it's a brilliant question, Elisa. Why, so go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, why, so why, why does that happen? Eric says because there is still some free will here. Yeah. And so you, you make choices. And, and we have ability to ascend or descend when we come into a life. 
Um, and there are those things that, you know, and those people who just don't, you know, they, because they're denser. I mean, they're, they, they're not as evolved and that makes it very more difficult. It makes it easier for the free will to plunge them into vic victimhood it, or anger or, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're coming and he says, we'll take anger, for instance, if you're coming in with something to learn about anger, well, you better believe there's going to be stuff that's going to make you angry yeah. and you're going to have challenges with anger and struggles with anger. And if you don't evolve, if you don't step outside of that earthly physical body to gain awakening, then you stay stuck in the mud. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and so as the lessons are coming to you, if you're properly integrating and learning from those lessons, life gets easier. Mm -hmm. And the more you're in service to others, the more love, light, and compassion that fills you and fills your space, the easier or more fulfilling your life gets. Yeah. If you're not learning those lessons, so let's say like Jennifer's example, if you're not learning that lesson, you're not dealing with your anger properly and you're getting into more and more conflicts with more and more people. Yeah. And you're playing the victim and you're descending into a low vibrational state, which is which is the world's out to get me and there's no consciousness being exhibited. Your anger, which is what you came to work on, actually gets more and more intense and more and more intense to create more and more suffering in the hopes that eventually you hit that moment of rock bottom and you propel off of it into yeah. awakening. So if you're learning the lessons, life is a beautiful thing. It orients you on your path and it just reinforces it. The, the next stone appears before you've even stepped on the stone before it. But if you're going the wrong direction, you're intensifying the negative forces and that's by design in the hope that eventually it tells you you're so misaligned that we're gonna make it almost impossible for you to continue on this path. It's like the universe hits you with a feather and you don't run the, the little uh, ping, a little hammer and eventually it's the sledgehammer. That's right. Maybe a feather to a, a, a ping pong ball, to a tennis ball, to a, a I don't know, a golf ball. Are you into sports? To a cannonball, Eric says, eventually. Really? I was going to say, eventually we'll get to something I'll knock your head off. <laughs> I got a, a nagging question. Uh, for Eric, and it's been nagging. Before I left the, left you that day to go for lunch, did I say I love you? Because we almost always yes. part ways say. Yes. yes. Um, he says the, the reason you can't remember it is, like, is because of the PTSD. You, 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 you know, you, you're misremembering or you're forgetting stuff from that day, but that's just the hum you know, your, your oh. defense mechanism trying to protect you. But yes, you did. Absolutely. And, and, he, and he hears you say it to him every day since. Oh, yeah. Um, can we talk about his spiritual, what's going on now on the other side as it relates to his chart? Sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Lucy, you're doing great. Thank you. This is, this is a beautiful part of your journey. Yeah. This, Whee! Is this, is your, this is your empowered moment. Eric says you're going to end up replaying this conversation afterwards. Oh yeah. Well, I want to hear listen for the EVP for one thing, but um, so so, so you, Eric, Eric, you have yeah, to understand Eric. what it's like to finally go home, right? In the context of an eternal being, like twenty years, give or take, hanging out in the earthly plane is just it's a slight, it's a short moment in time. Yeah. It required some healing because of the traumas that he experienced, but it's a beautiful moment when the honey returns to the honey pot. It just yeah. it's it's Sweet. it's like the honey gets out it gets out of the, the oil and now it goes back into the honey pot. It feels right. I can't get Winnie the Pooh out of my head right now. Yeah. Oh. So Eric's <laughs> bouncing around like Winnie the Pooh. Although in this yeah. case, Eric is so active that he's doing everything he can to continue to influence the ascension, but from a spiritual space. He says he's more and, like Tigger now. Yeah. Uh, if, if you I know do. Winnie the Pooh well, he's, he's more like Tigger bouncing around everywhere. So um, can, when you read his chart or anybody's chart, can you, sure. all, can you also apply it to after, they, after their transition or even let's before not, their, I don't know. So the chart speaks to the energy or the dimensions that Eric passed through to harness the necessary traits for the incarnation. Yes. Oh, that that whole YouTube that we did, where you explained really how astrology works, was so amazing. I know. I I actually went back and I read the comments. It's pretty funny. What, well, <laughs> some, well, some people well, end up talking about. Um, 
So you have to think about it on a pre-incarnation basis, everything's being planned. And so different qualities that you need, which are personality traits, have to be harnessed because the spirit doesn't have the human qualities that we interact with. It has to move through various dimensions to capture those qualities to live out the mission expected. Yeah. And so Eric's chart, which is just the incarnation planned, it would have carried through to the end of his life, was showing me a particularly spiritual, particularly influential, particularly, well, introspective, but inter, inner, innerly, innerly challenged chart all with the intention of getting lift off so that he could fulfill his mission. Yeah. There's nothing easy about Eric's early stages. It would have taken him right through his 20s to get past yeah. those struggles, and it would have taken a great deal of spiritual protection to keep him safe so that he could step into this sort of chart. So this, is a, this is a rare inner conflict heavy chart. Yeah, oof. I know. I remember. And, and, and mine, remember, that's, mine was very similar, or yours was very similar. I can't remember. Um, no, the all... I, I haven't seen in all the charts that I've read over the years. There's very few charts with that degree of inner struggle. But two charts were very similar. Either yours and and his, or mine and his. I can't remember. No, I'm just the triangles pretty... were like. Um, you guys, you have a couple similarities for sure, but the, the Eric's entire chart is oriented. It's it's all in the spiritual houses. It's the it's ninth house, which is spiritual understanding, and then 12th house, which is access to, it's karma, but it's access to the alternate realms. Wow. Um, yeah, Eric's heart is ex a chart is exceptional. I, I, I could read a thousand charts and not see another with that kind of intensity. Ah, oh, that's amazing. So, Eric, what? How is your mission to uh, help us ascend going on on that side? Yeah, he he Wait. says so. So basically, he still is doing that that work that his chart would show here that he was trying to do. He's able to do it there, but because of where he is, it's he says it's much less pressure on me. Yeah. Um. It's 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 not that it's easy because it's you know it's a lot of work and and you know it it's going to take time. But he doesn't have all that earthly heaviness, yeah. negativity to to no. deal with and to get past in order to do the work. Well, why didn't you just do it all from the other side? I mean, did you have to incarnate? I'm glad you did. You know what yeah. he just said to me? He said, "What fun would that have been?" Yeah. Um, he he could be yeah. a lot more. He could he can be a lot more effective here in the physical realm to influence the physical realm. Okay, but but then also because of the trifecta of me the internet yes. him well tetra so what, the best way to, and, the best way to the best way, i don't know if you play chess or jennifer if you play chess you know how you have the pawns and then you have the powerful pieces behind it yeah right so humans are pawns they get sacrificed very easily they kind of only just move in one direction they're very simple yeah and then there are incredible forces at play that are sitting behind that are waiting for their opportunity to really cause, you know, to, to cause whatever it is that they're seeking. The, there's white and there's black, there's good yeah. and there's bad, there's positive and there's negative. If a pawn can somehow make it all the way to the other side of the board, then the pawn can get swapped into any piece the player wants. Okay. okay? And the equivalent there is if Eric had managed to get to the other side of the board, he would have reached full consciousness and he would have been the powerful as as if you were a spiritual being but a spiritual being here incarnate in the physical plane uh, would he be right? able to have as much influence over the masses as he is right now from so you, you, you have to understand that that when you reach that level of consciousness what we consider to be magical powers can also become somewhat available so things oh. like clair clairvoyance clairaudience telepathy telekinesis right you're when you look at the the journey of christ and then some of the disciples it would look as if christ had these magical powers christ was just that conscious being who was able to walk on water because oh. he had his full awakening that enabled such a skill. Okay. I'm telling you, the, the earth is moving into a new realm where things like that, that seem so outlandish and magical, yeah. over the next decade or two are gonna start to show themselves more often. Okay. Now, and that's the incarnation that Eric was choosing, was to be able to walk into that space. 
uh, before we wrap up, I want to ask Eric, you know, tell me about Alan. <laughs> Wait a uh, second. Isn't this yeah, a, I, yeah. Not, uh, not just some anonymous guy hanging out no, here? I, no, no, not anymore, you ain't. Um, so that's a very open-ended question. Okay. Yeah. So, um, tell me what we need to I, know about Alan. I, I, I anyway. trust Eric's. I trust Eric's judgment fully. Okay. Completely. Um. Well, you know, when you when you ask the other side in a psychic medium to tell you about somebody, that can go a whole lot of directions. Oh. Go um, any direction you like, Jennifer. He's like. Uh, well, he was at first, and I was like, uh-uh, no, we're not, we're not doing uh, well, anything. Alan looks like, okay, I mean, is, is he part of uh, our soul no. family? Is, yes, he's, he's, part of the, he, yes he's part of the soul family. He's part of the awakening that is to be done here um, on the planet. Uh, Eric, Eric said, and I don't know if this shows up in your chart, Alan, but um, Eric is saying uh, when you came in this time, you kind of intended for this to be maybe potentially the last time you come here last time um yep so he's like you know you're you know we can change our mind when we get back over there but that was your plan when you came in here that was the agreement <laughs> um so um so he's i guess he's validating yes that is that is the case um you were you were it's funny how he puts this you were meant to walk between two worlds while you were here um, in the sense that you had the, you know, the financial, the material, this, this sort of um, stability, maybe more of a traditional sure. way of life. Um, in, and then in combination with this spiritual, the astral plane, the, you know, this, you, you were meant to come in and be like that to, to be one of the people that bridge the gap for yeah. the pawns down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the people who need that, you know, that awakening and, and need a way to get to get to it. Um, he is talking about your dreams. So I don't know if you're currently having different or weird or more vivid dreams. Um, there's something there opening up that you're going to be having more information. You really need to be writing this stuff down. Um, my, if you're, my, my dreams? Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I have a dream journal. Okay. Yeah. You really, really need to pay attention to that because what Eric says about you is the reason that you really like astrology so much is you like a puzzle. Okay. So when your dreams are coming to you, they're not coming to you with the actual clear information. You need to travel down the journey and see where that path takes you. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, I, I've actually been offsetting a lot of past life traumas in my dreams lately. Okay. Uh, yeah, good, but it's not, most of your stuff, he says, is not coming, you know, like a shot to the gut. It's coming on the outskirts where you have to figure it out. He says you like a puzzle, you like a mystery, you like... Subtle little messages yeah. that are not mm -hmm. uh, obvious. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and those he, are some of the things he says about you. Okay. He likes you. Oh, um, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, he, he likes to uh, come around you. He... I don't, I don't do astrology. I mean, I know a little bit about it, but he likes to come around when you're, um, mapping. Um, is mapping that a, or mapping, 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 is that something that you do with astrology? Are you like moving well, stuff around? And mapping know, stuff, or astrology, is that is, astrology is one tool in the toolbox, if you will. And so I use astrology to give me an indication of somebody's energetic influences but then it's usually more intuition that helps me guide somebody through a discussion. Okay. Well, he it's must be helping. He must be kind of helping you um, with that. Um, but yeah. it very much feels like mapping. Like I don't, I don't know. I don't know why he's using that word. I don't. Well, I, I don't doubt it. Is he channeling, Eric? Ch uh, does Alan channel? Okay. Yes. So uh, for me, Jennifer, I'm very specific about this because I I channel but I do not direct channel. Okay. So like I stay here, they stay there and we, I guess more like telepathic communication. Yeah. Um, which is what will people will feel like is their gut instinct, their intuition, something just pops into their head. He's telling me that's what Alan does. Um, not necessarily direct channel, but is like, it like telepathic communication. Claire cognizance? That's yeah. Like Claire cognizance. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. That makes sense, Alan. Makes sense. <laughs> So Eric, um, is there anything else you want to 
tell me how I can help you accomplish your, I mean, your mission he, or, or what, what further he, it? He says to me is that he has no, no regrets. He says, I have no regrets. Um, so the work that you're doing, he says, you couldn't possibly do any more than what you're doing right now. Um, he says, you just got to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Okay. Oh, yeah. So that you're able to continue this, but he has no regrets about where he's at in his journey. Good. That's good. So, so well, Lisa, uh, but, and I'll take that one step further is that by virtue of you putting this content out, the people that are intended to either contact Jennifer or contact myself or contact other spiritualists that can help guide them down their path. They're given that indication of where to go. They, there's a resonance with the words that they hear and the personalities that come through, and it enters into their consciousness that tells them where to go next. Oh, that's good. And so right, just so by virtue of you creating the conduit, you're doing exactly what it is that you're supposed to be doing. That's good. All right, so um, you guys need to check these geniuses out. Um, um, psychic medium i can't talk about it. it's been very emotional psychic medium jennifer doran com and alanvera.com and check out his youtube channel as well and um i love you eric very much I love you too, the youtube Mama. channel has um i post some of the readings some of the a, 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 a few people and it's beautiful a small portion of them will actually give me the discussion after some of them are very personal very intimate it takes some time because I'm talking to people for the first time. So it takes some time, usually like our discussions, but a lot of them show a really beautiful progression as people start to enter into a little bit more consciousness and an understanding of some of the struggles in their life. Yeah. Um, I called it the, uh, the beautiful soul series. So that's right. That's, that's a wonderful starting point for people who want to see how you can intertwine the energetic influence and indications from your chart with how your life has been unfolding for greater understanding of where you are and perhaps what it all means. All right, that's, this is wonderful. I'm gonna put that in the description box, people. And um, sorry for the waterworks, but that's what I do. I see Bambi's mom die, that's it. I'm done. So, yeah. you, you know you're getting closer to the truth when you see the tears. That's true. All right, I love you guys. Love, love you, you too. Love you both. Thanks for this. Yes. All right, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye.